those are, those are uh, open. That one. You're tuning in to the first episode of Musical Musings with Mark Woody at that's me, and Joey Akins, my guest today and throughout all time. So Joey is a multi-instrumentalist, but I guess you could say he's a guitarist, extraordinaire, fine pianist, vocalist, songwriter, singer, a renaissance man, uh, very health, knowledgeable health-wise. And uh, to connect all the dots, this uh, series of interviews that I'm taking part in are truly to bring to the consciousness of the people in both northeastern Pennsylvania and the greater universe something in the form of a musical experience. And uh, even though it may Makes, it makes me feel like Carl Sagan um, right now. <laughs> music is truly something that can relate to the planets above um, as well as to our inner worlds. Joey and I have been playing music most of our lives. And uh, Joey, you also tune pianos. Do you want to talk about how that connected us? And then we, we could go from there. All right, the book begins. Yes, and whatever happens from this... I think you this... left out a few... Uh, oh, chapters, yeah. Uh, acclamations here. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. Yes, yeah, I, I could certainly uh, acclaim that Joe is absolutely extraordinary in no, so many realms, and he's got that. some new music coming out, um, a CD that I'm uh, 
largely anticipating for probably five years, but uh, it's always new. The music that we create has room for improvisation. It's interesting. I was just listening to uh, the uh, Glenn Gould, if, if anyone doesn't know, was an extraordinary pianist in the early, or I would say mid-1900s, right? I think he... Yeah, I'd say the 50s and 60s. I think he lived he maybe the late 80s. In the 60s or 70s. Yeah, extraordinary uh, pianist. Yeah, he lived I into mean, the 80s, and, and as, I believe. And as, as far as a, a character goes, Ooh. I would say he was equally as fascinating just to listen to Glenn Gould talk. But he did a... Always wore I sunglasses. his first recording was the Goldberg Variations. And I think that was the late 50s or early 60s. And yes. then she recorded the same piece again uh, in, the, I think, 1983. And the really? difference between those two interpretations are radically different. The first one is sprite. It's full of energy. It's, it's, it's almost too fast, but still virtuosic. And then when he comes back to it in 1983, it's like he's a different person. It's every note takes its time and it breathes and there's space between every note and he lets every, every chord, every harmony just ring out into the air and expand and it shows just how expressive Bach could be. So, but that's, wow. that, that's a tangent that I'm on, but yeah. That's fascinating. You know, Bach has been a tangent that I've been on for months. Just to yep. sh just Once to he share. gets you, it's over. Once, once One piece. you get the Bach bug, is there a Bach bug? There is a Bach people bug. Get? I think so. You can't return from it. No. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Like, as far as the piano goes, um, I'm not sure there was sort of a lot in there. You, you're asking how, well, how maybe the piano... And, why, and why don't you refine that question? How about, how about this? Um, we can hold on to that thought and kind of go in the direction of where you just were with the Bach. For example... Something that helped me immensely, and I didn't uh, always realize this when I was a child and I was playing Bach regularly for, as part of my studies, I think that had an impact on me. But as I uh, kind of came back to discovering improvisation within every piece of music that is in existence pretty much, that I w I'd be playing in some way or form, how th there would be a way of that type of expression. Um, improvisation is just one word for it. Uh, because improvisation could also mean other things like notes, and that's what I'm talking about actually, notes, changing the notes, uh, or drawing out a phrase, like for example, uh, like if I just was playing a... And, and such like that, just, you know, extending one phrase with, you know, an extra uh, repetition, just even if it's not musical. Uh, although when I do it, it's usually after I'm, I'm finished the form of a piece. Um, I started to figure out that with these unaccompanied violin sonatas, which are played on the guitar, and I know that you play those, and you could play them on the piano. I feel like they're, they're equally playable on, on whatever instrument, mm -hmm. which is fascinating. That's why these pieces are really great, because you can make them appealing to, I think, a modern day people, modern day music lovers, modern, modern day uh, dancers, you know, like there's, there's an app, you, you can f make this music, I think, work with anything, like, like the, you know, like that yeah. drum and bass, I, I, that I've was kind of old I've heard heavy old metal bands though. do both Bach and Vivaldi. Oh, that's funny, and, yeah. Uh, and they do translate. When I, um, when I fell in <laughs> love with Beethoven, which was my, f that was my entry into classical music. I had no, Beethoven. no sensibility Beethoven. for classical music until, I don't know, I was maybe 15 or 16. I was in, when he used to have record shops and you can go in and dig through tapes and rec and, you know, yeah. CDs, there was a discount bin and it was like three, four dollars for, and I was just digging through it, and I saw this beautiful box set. It was I was strictly drawn to it Beethoven? because of the visual aesthetic. It had an idyllic, romantic painting on the cover. And I just saw it, and I was like, Beethoven, Ninth Symphonies. Three bucks. God, I'll it in the cart. Changed everything. 
So, but anyway, I just I remember that's great though being I... in shock at the diversity. Like there were certain areas of symphonies where it sounded like heavy metal. And then there were sections that Absolutely. sounded like I could hear pop music in it. And then I could hear little phrases that were almost country. And like the, all the genres of music were just contained within, and in you all could just these say nine that symphonies. The only difference even is one, that he didn't stay there. Like modern music to me at that point became taking oh, about... Oh, let's take a vibe. Like let's take three a few seconds. bars of Beethoven and loop yeah. it over and over again. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Now there's a place for that. That that's not. I never became, um, you know, as <laughs> critical of music where I thought modern music because this happens too. A lot. You get carried away with the academic or the elitism in classical music, and you can easily yeah. um, start putting down other genres as the. And no, there's a time. There's a place for all of it. You know, like you. The, the expression can't be limited. It can't be, you can't uh, write laws, whether they're, right, whether they're, you know, social positions. This is the way this should be played. Right. Am, right. I, am I totally changing the subject or is that what you're trying to say? Yeah, that's, that's on the track, yeah. You know? Now, I, I will say guitar-wise, because I started out. There's a proper um, way to do it? Well, no, I started yeah. off playing guitar by figuring out what I had access to, and at the time, there were these incredible guitar players that were all playing in these sort of progressive, heavy metal bands, right? Yeah. But they were really neoclassical guitar players that were plugging into an electric guitar amp with, dis with distortion on it. Um, neoclassical is a great word. So man. Yeah, I'm figuring out all these like, maybe crazy what, what solos. And we're neoclassical like, musicians. <laughs> We're neoclassical, dude. And then when, when uh, I would hear stuff on the radio that, we, you know, like, since you're playing, I'm like, yeah, well, yeah, I please, well do please. It. But I, I, you'd turn on the radio and it would be like, you know, it, it, it was like, there's no challenge in that, so I'm going to skip that. But funny, uh, like later on, after I got through the, the shredding, then you find the nuances and the, and the simple stuff. Yeah, after. And appreciate it then better. I, yeah, I, 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 it got boring. And I started liking simple. melodies. Yeah, songs, beautiful. Right? Yeah. And later on in life, I really became conscious of the fact that because um, a lot of brilliant musicians get sort of disillusioned and sometimes even disgruntled because they can't find a large audience, because the people that want to hear that are the other great musicians. When you're playing on a level of absolute virtuosity, you actually often can limit your audience. At the end of the day, yeah. when you come home after a long day of work, you want to hear something that speaks to you. You want to hear something that you relate to, that, you, that sort of expresses your feelings for you and that you can and sometimes you know like, that you know, like man, that's not that's what, with a gym maybe you know right or, or uh, for like you know if, yeah i know what you mean so i've gravitated more towards actually tuning into what i what makes me feel like balanced mm -hmm. and, and at peace and sometimes it's just a couple notes mm -hmm. you know the, the right yeah. notes in the right place and yep and I That's found a great that, point. that I never regretted like the because you the could crazy listen to that crazy stage. stuff all day long. What and it gives, yourself what it gives and you, make is, yourself go crazy. <laughs> right, it gives you control over that yeah. note, you know. Right, you know. So if you don't have the ability to play, you know, then you don't have the ability to play that that simple yeah, that feeling phrase. And that's where I found the usefulness of, of mastering 
Now, classical music's a little bit different. Like, it's a different language. So well, I you're never certainly feel a master of, uh, of, of contemporary music. Yeah, I never um, feel like you're overplaying in classical music. It, it's when, when you hear those, you know, incredibly difficult pieces that yeah. you're not, it's not overplaying. There, there seems to be, um, you know, like in nature, you see like a cluster of leaves. You never think that's too complicated. Sometimes you know? I think players can complicate it, but. Oh, right, the way you interpret it, correct. Yes. But, yeah, the composition itself. The composition itself, itself is, is... Played in its it right stands form, yeah. true in the test of time. Yep, yeah. yeah. Amazing. So. Is that how the, you, you approach your compositions in your, uh, in your own work? In your, in your I artistry? think I have is, probably... Is J.B. Aikens? Okay. Yeah, I, I, I think I definitely have a more classical approach of composing music rather, um, you know, yes. e even, even when I'm just basic, when, when I, studio to me is like the canvas. That's where you, you paint, right? Yes. And, and that's why I've always um, needed to play all the instruments because I'm working, the instruments are just my paints. Right. And the, the, the silence is my canvas that I'm recording on, so. Right, Bring, from bringing bringing sort of the, the compositional approach and tradition of the so great masters of like Bach and Mozart and, and the fact that they could play piano and violin. You inspired me to, to learn more instruments better. Yeah, I must say, yeah, yeah, definitely, especially the keyboards. I took that really seriously, um, and I've got a lot of hope that uh, I'll continue to get better at that stuff. I mean, in um, the end, you know, it's I'm always it's working on kind of all the same. It depends, I guess, how you work. Like, you can work from the ground up, or you can bring what's up here in the ether down. down yeah. And I tend to do that. So that's why, you know, like playing all the instruments is just consequential of how I approach things. But interesting. And um, here I am trying to do it from the ground up. Maybe I should be trying from. I mean, both have their value, you know. Oh, yeah, I think you need to have put your foot into the pond. I think ideally both would be, one. Yeah, you know, a synergy but, of both. But uh, yeah, there are just different ways of expressing music, right? This, this wow. ability yeah. to, to use sound and frequency to Expr communicate. Beyond even what right? the word music, right? Yeah. It's, yep. Hey, well, speaking so. of, is there a tune that you'd like to maybe play together that we've played before? Uh, I, th I think there's only one of those, right? Well, there's a I couple, but uh, whatever, which, whatever, whatever, yeah. The one that we were thinking about doing, I think, would be fun. All right. What's it called again? Is it the We Are Not Alone? Yeah, yeah. I don't have that guy. No, <laughs> right. So this is an E flat. Very good. I think I think when I wrote it, it was in D. We thank everybody for watching, and uh, I'm Mark Woody. This is Joey Akins. Wasted time, I was just wasting away. Words could not define the way that I feel at all. Please, can you just bear with me? No, we're not alone. Everyone inside. set you free no we never never were alone manifold of longing tears the stars are shaking colliding in their space heart of hearts night of all is overtaken Speak of please oh. 
everyone inside of me. The truth alone won't set you free. No, we never. the song that broke the silence. Yeah, and you know, it's a little bit of a different arrangement than I I recall playing, which is exciting. Well, we just talked about... uh, Right, exactly, the Glenn Gould thing, you know? How about that? Never do it the same twice. No, you never do. Make sure it's recognizable. Definitely. That's brilliant, Joe. You just pretty much put into essence the whole theme of today's show. Thank you very much. And if people want to check out your work, where can they go? You have a website you'd like to forward us to, or well, album I, information, or yeah, products? So there, there's, there's for your for your artistry as a uh, musician, artist, and also for your piano su- tuning services. Please. What is this like? This is like a plug, right? Like an ad. No, but no, just, just so people know what your uh, business is, because I mean, there's really not that many piano tuners around here, and you're actually. Uh, b- quite exceptional at it and uh, I know that there are many piano tuners um, that you kind of have taken a, you know taken the torch from for, for some yeah, historic we, we don't pianos last forever, do we? and some historic buildings I mean that's one of the things that I I'd like to uh, share our performances maybe or sounds of these pianos at some point you know that'd be cool yeah. to hear um, yeah so yeah as far as the music goes um, I, I do have a record in process um, and, and a website. Um, I guess I guess I'll give it. It's technically not launched, but it is it it is there. So just jbakins.com. Um, okay. Jb Akins. A i k e n s. J b a i k e n s. So it's right now is just kind of a template placeholder for what's and there there is a sample on there of of, of one, one of the songs, but. Um, yeah. So well, yeah. So with with, can't wait to hear that. with uh, work, which as you mentioned, I've been tuning pianos for about twenty years now. Don't know how that happened, where the time went. <laughs> um, but that you know, it's when when you have a business, sometimes the business has you, right? It, yep. it owns you. So it's uh, I do believe I've heard that before. Trick of balancing. Which I haven't. I'm trying to work out how to balance it right now. So. Better balance it, yeah. Yeah. So you, see, you ho- do the impossible I'm hoping already, by so. the by the end of the year I'll have that ready ready to go. I can start releasing music. So yeah, it's good. On, when I when piano tuning came upon me um, in my early twenties. Yes. Um, uh oh, I just gave my age away. Not don't really. don't do math. Um, the music, which up to that point was 100% of my life, right? Around age yeah. 12, I started performing. Um, the 
the, the music somehow got left behind. And many, not, not many, entirely. Years, many years went by. Yes. Until I woke up one early morning. Uh, In your re 30s? Realizing <laughs> why I wasn't happy because there was something essential missing in my life that um, shouldn't have been missing. Oh, seriously. So, so now I'm trying, you know, I'm trying to live a dual life it's, it's, um, and return back, to, return back to myself. Yeah, it makes me laugh almost in pain. Yeah, well, don't, don't hurt yourself. No, no, I'll be fine, you know. So... What do you think? This one, this one will be called Rain. I guess we're playing.
Ah. Oh. Thank you, Joe. My friend. Welcome. Thanks, everybody. If you're still watching, it's our 40 at with JB Akins. Red. Red means cut out. Show's over.